Welcome to In the Green with B and I. I'm your host, Paul Kroger, and my co-host, Felicia Johnson. How are you doing this week, Felicia? I'm doing well, Paul. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. It's hot. It's finally summer. Summer is here for sure, but I'm enjoying Definitely. it. Well, hey, I'm excited because we've got a really hot guest today, and uh, he is Mr. William Belvin from the Nash Law Firm. Um, I'm really excited to learn a little bit more about his business, and uh, I'm always, I'm, it's probably like a little bit of a sickness, but I'm always excited about getting uh, a lawyer's perspective on things that are going on, so excited to hear a little bit more about his business. But before we get into that, I wanted to ask you, um, so in all of this COVID environment, is there something that's really stuck out to you that's been just kind of like a silver lining or something that's been really good that's come out of that? Yes, I have been spending some time with my daughter. Like we spent time before, but we've been working some of her art projects and it's been a really fun time. She actually started a YouTube channel. So it's been really fun seeing her blossom and, and do all that in her artwork. So I'm not necessarily sure we would have got to that point anytime soon. So this time was like, you know, we got some time, so let's do it. So and her friends get to watch and, you know, like and subscribe and all that. So it's been a really good time. How about you? Yeah, it's been, I think the my favorite part of what's happened in COVID is we've created a routine as a family where we get to have lunch together almost every day, at least three or four days a week. And then until it got really hot, we would go on a family walk together and just get to like talk about what was going on and what we really loved about these days. Oh, well, that's awesome. There's some definitely some bright spots in all of this that's going on in, in our society. There are. So, bad. so I am so excited that you are on the show with us, Will. Welcome to In the Green with B and I. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, and it's a pleasure to be here with you guys so on this lovely Friday almost to the weekend, right? Yes, absolutely. So what have you been doing since this whole COVID thing? How has your life changed or a bright spot for you? So I would say that the bright spot has been, I mean, people have really learned to evolve and change with the times. For example, um, I mean, while the courts were closed to the public, we adapted as a profession and moved to Zoom meetings and electronic meetings, teleconferences and all of that, so that we can continue our constitutional duty to provide access to justice um, to all of our clients and all of the citizens of Arkansas. So I just think that that's been an amazing thing that kind of, you know, the Supreme Court took the initiative on here in, here in Little Rock and led the way. And it's just, it's been a way that we've been able to continue to provide our necessary services to the citizens of this great state. So. Uh, that's awesome. Oh, that's echo. I hurt myself for a second there. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's awesome. So you shared a little bit about yourself. And so mm -hmm. tell me about these two dogs you got, Sherlock and Watson. So I got Sherlock uh, my senior year in undergrad up at Lyon College in Batesville. And he was a Humane Society dog. They found him in a field as a baby. And I, I, in my fraternity, I was the philanthropy chair, so we did kind of a rent a dog around finals oh, for the college students. They, we, we worked with the Humane Society. They brought dogs out to campus, and we would rent them to raise money for the Humane Society so you could have a puppy to kind of de-stress during finals. Oh, wow. And Sherlock was there, and I just fell in love with him, so I adopted him, and um, I've had him ever since. And then about a year ago, I decided that Sherlock needed a playmate, so I got a Corgi and decided, well, if I have Sherlock, I have to have a Watson, right? Mm -hmm. So now I've got uh, Sherlock and Watson. Um, Sherlock has been quarantined at Grandma and Grandpa's house since this whole thing started, so he's he's been getting spoiled over in Oklahoma, but hopefully I can get him back soon once once uh, the cases start going down. All right. Well, that's, that's amazing. I know we had uh, two dogs as well, 20 years, and like I said, they are definitely a part of your family and all of that. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, so we know that you're going to talk a little bit more about your you being a lawyer and everything with that. Um, but I also know, as you uh, shared here, that you do serve in the Oklahoma Army National Guard. And so I just want to say thank you um, for your service. Have an absolute appreciation for that. Um, 
coming from a military family myself, I wore my my military fatigue. And go, <laughs> there we go. I'm wearing this for Will today. Like in, in the, in there the, we go. So, so we well, absolutely love, thank you for your service. Thank you. It's always good to meet another person from a military family. Um, the service does kind of seem to run in families, I've noticed. There's a lot of, I know my dad served and my grandfather served and cousins and everything. And it just seems, I don't know what it is, but it seems to run in some families. So I appreciate your family service too. Yeah. Well, we all know like the, the military has core values that they live by. But mm -hmm. as a member of BNI that you joined back in May 2019, you are very familiar with our core values. So I would love to know of these core values, which one really resonates with you? Building relationships. And, and as an attorney, that is one of the most important things that we do is we have to, in a relatively short period of time, build that professional relationship with our client. And so BNI, I think, has taken that to another level because now you're building an important relationship with a business colleague somebody who you get to know not just their business and what they do but who they are as a person and that in turn builds trust which is just necessary for me to feel comfortable referring clients to you so mm -hmm. like that one is just right off the top that's my favorite absolutely we look forward to a relationship with you and learning more about you so i'm going to switch it on over to paul all righty william um one thing i wanted to say Congratulations. You may or may not even know that we were going to do this. Um, but in BNI, we like to keep score. Okay. And uh, one of those core values that we have is recognition. And uh, so we were perusing the BNI uh, um, stack rankings this week and noticed that you are number two all time in the BNI University local area chapter stack ranking. So you may or may not even know that, but congratulations, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know that. Congratulations. There's now a really I handsome think... guy who's number one, though. Right, I don't, right, I don't but know you who number one, right? <laughs> <laughs> congratulations so, um, to you, Paul, too. Well, I appreciate that. Well, hey, uh, one of the questions I had was, tell us a little bit about your role at the Nash Law Firm and before you get too deep into that, how did you find law as really your passion and your career path? So I was one of those weird kids. Um, and I remember it was like first or second grade and, and starting the new school year and the teacher asked, you know, what do you want to do? What do you want to be when you grow up? And I mean, first and second grade, as you got the typical, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be president. I want to be, you know, a professional football player. And I was the odd kid out that said, I want to be a lawyer, you know, um, which took the teacher by surprise because they're used to hearing doctors, but not so much lawyers, right? We're, we're not exactly a glamorous job. Um, and I really think my mom has worked in the legal career uh, for 30 something years. And so I honestly think that it's one of those things that you're just born with. It. The law is in your blood and it's just something that you're drawn to. So this is what I've always wanted to do is to be an attorney. We might not say it's glamorous. I tried to wear my shirt to match your tie today. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> just, just to keep up with your sense of fashion. Well, man, I appreciate that. Tell me a little bit about your role. I'm here to help facilitate and try and resolve that issue, whether it be through an administrative hearing, or if we have to, we can file a, a, a lawsuit in the tax court or the federal courts. Because if you have a dollar and two relatives, you need to figure out what you want to do with that. Because if you don't, guess what? The state has a plan for you, and most of us don't like that. So um, it's just, it's all about sitting down with a potential client, spending about an hour to an hour and a half, getting to know them, getting to know their family, the dynamic, their assets, and then what are they wanting to do? What's their plan? And from there, we can piece together the appropriate estate plan for them that encompasses everything and takes care of them from the time we start the plan until, I mean, potentially 100 years down the road if they go with the trust. So it just, you know, it just depends on the client. That's awesome. So, so Will, with the, with the state planning, what are some of the challenges that you face um, talking about that with, with clients and, you know, encouraging them to do that? Because we know it's important, mm -hmm. but not everybody does that. Like, so what is the, some of the challenges that you face in order to have those conversations? The biggest challenge, well, 
one of the biggest challenges is just getting people to talk about it, period. Um, when you're doing your estate planning, you're kind of facing your own mortality. People don't like to do that. Once they get comfortable with it, it, come, it becomes easier for them to think about, well, what do I want to happen? How do I want things to unfold? Uh, and the other thing is, like I said, we've got to build that rapport because I'm going to be asking a lot of personal questions about assets, about your family dynamic, your relationship with your children, your relationship with, I mean, any number of family members that you might want to leave gifts to, you know, are they disabled? Do they have any sort of a problem that we need to be planning for? So it's, it's really about trying to get as personal and comfortable with the client as you can as soon as possible in order for me to be able to adequately do my job. And, and that's just, it's hard for some people. Um, yeah. The other main issue is people always say, I'll do it later. You know, I'm young, I'm in my 30s. I'm young, I'm in my 40s. So I'm only in my 50s. And if you wait too long and, you know, you, you develop like dementia or Alzheimer's, now we can't do anything. You know, our hands are tied. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of the big things that, that I fight and have to deal with. Well, um, absolutely, I can see that. I, I would imagine that now, um, like I said, you know, we were talking about in the beginning of the show about what are some bright spots that kind of came out of this whole COVID type situation. And I would think that maybe some more individuals are probably are awakened to that. Like, mm -hmm. okay, things can change very quickly that we don't even know about. So, you know, planning our futures and making sure our estate is, is in order, I mm -hmm. would think that gives someone like me, you know, a conversation to say, hey, contact Will um, about this and um, estate planning. So, so yeah. So, I contact Will about your will. Can I say there, that? Yeah, I'm a Will who <laughs> does wills. <laughs> okay, there you go. I, I like it. Yeah. Yep. So, Will, one of the biggest things about In the Green with B&I is we love to celebrate people who BNI is a really important strategic part of their business strategy. Mm -hmm. So, if somebody was to ask you, why should I invest my time and money in BNI? How would you answer the question? It's going to go back to those those um, core competencies that BNI, the, the values. And to me, why is you build relationships. You have a weekly platform where you are telling your business colleagues, this is what I'm looking for. And then they go out and they are, it's your own kind of um, advertising team. And so for that next week, they know, hey, this week, this is what I'm looking for. And they're out there hustling for you, just like you're out hustling for them. And I think that, I mean, that in and of itself is worth it because you can't get marketing for the price that you spend for your investment in BNI. Thanks for sharing that. No problem. Yeah. So, Will, we want to say thank you so much for joining uh, us on In the Green with me and I. And it is official. You got your green light. Thank you so much for your recognition for coming out and being um, a great member of BNI and great referral partners for your chapter members. So, thank you. You are in the green. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Absolutely. So you out there that might be watching the show and you're thinking like, hey, how do I learn more about BNI and becoming a member? All you got to do right here is this QR code. It's just take out your phone, open your camera app and simply scan this QR code. And it's going to lead you to an interest form. And it's going to allow you that opportunity to say, yes, I want to learn more about BNI. You'll fill out that form and it'll come to our region to where you'll be able to connect you with the chapter that's just right for you. So thank you again for joining us here in the green. I'm Felicia Miller Johnson with my co-host Paul Kroger and our guest today, Will Blevins.